Welcome, everyone. Um, so thank you uh, for your interest in the part time program, the Masters in Sustainable Urban Development offered by the Department of Continuing Education here at Oxford University. So today's session is an information session for you to learn more about the program. I hope I can be as clear as possible. This format is a bit uh, challenging in the sense that we have people online, but I can't see anyone. Hopefully you can see me and can hear me clearly. Um, a bit about myself. My name is Patricia Canellas. I'm a departmental lecturer here at the department. I'm an architect and urbanist by training. I worked as an architect for about 10 years of my life. Then I decided to move back to academia. This was roughly another 10 years ago. I, I moved to London to do my PhD, where I stayed teaching and doing research until um, four years ago when I joined the program here at Oxford. So I'm one of the co-directors for the program. Um, let me tell you a bit more about our program. So this is a taught part time over two years master's program in sustainable urban development. The fact that it's part time and spread over two years, and I'll tell you a bit more on how this works in a second, enables our students to work without compromising their learning experience. That's a bit unique about <clears throat> master's programs in sustainable urban development in the UK. So who delivers this program? So it's us, tutors from the Department for Continuing Education, alongside other academics from across the University of Oxford. But also, and this is again, is something a bit unique, unique about our program. We invite a lot of practitioners uh, to our teaching weeks so that we can try and bridge academic knowledge and practical knowledge. We really make this our goal to bridge what has been considered the gap between academic knowledge and practical knowledge. We want to give you the tools so that you can use in tomorrow's meeting alongside tools for you to engage in critical ways, in critical thinking, be able to judge material information, data that is out there to challenge uh, its sources to make sure that the, what the data is actually telling you. So we have this key goal to bridge academic knowledge and practical knowledge. The program is therefore aimed at working professionals. Our geography, uh, as you will see in a map um, in, in a subsequent slide, we have a worldwide uh, group of st uh, students and alumni. So if you join the program, students that join the program, join a knowledgeable global community with hopefully truly diverse perspectives. That's what we uh, uh, target. So who are we? So I'm Patricia Canella, as I told you before, one of the course co-directors with my colleague Nigel. Then there's a group of, I think, 10 currently academics uh, fully on the program. We are also very diverse in our geographies, so I won't try and say their last names because I will say them all wrong. So my colleagues Nihan, Idalina, Desiree, Francesca, Debbie, David, Pedro, Vlad, Matthew and Ben. You can learn more about our research interests, our research projects on our websites. Do please spend a bit of time um, if you're considering applying, checking our research areas of interest to see how they could potentially overlap yours. So how is the course sort of structured? There are eight core themes structured around urban theory. The way we try and convey urban theory and these eight core themes, which I'll tell you what they are in over the next slide, is through case studies, practical uh, examples that we draw from your own experience, from the students' own experience. We try to bring that all to the lecture room. And rather than the traditional lecture where you have the tutor, the lecturer standing, speaking at you, the way we teach, it's much more conversational. We try a seminar, seminar, seminar style, sorry, approach where we have a round table. Obviously, there's an element of a lecture, um, but then it's always followed by a conversation where we try and make the examples, the cases, the theory we've the, we've mobilized and used as practical and as applicable 
uh, to the students' own experiences, geographies, etc. So part of our core uh, teaching is research methods. As I referred before, we want our students to leave uh, with more robust critical thinking skills than they join the program. And one of the ways in which we see we can do that is through teaching them research methods. This means that they will be able to evaluate um, assumptions. They will be able to evaluate data that is out there. Where is this study coming from? Why is this saying the things it's saying? Is is it evidence-based? Where is the evidence coming? Is this specific to this particular geography or is it translatable into different geographies? So these are the, the, the sort of things you learn through learning research methods. It might sound abstract, but it's actually very practical and a, a transferable skill that you can use in many different jobs you might have in your life. The final element of the course is the dissertation. This is a 15,000 uh, 15, words maximum um, piece of written work on a topic that you chose by the end of first year. So you still have the first year to make sense of what is the topic that interests, uh, interests me the most and to decide to settle on that topic and to start doing your research. So in very practical terms, the way we offer this program is that there are eight residential teaching weeks over two years. Six of these teaching weeks are held in Oxford, two are held in London. What do we mean by residential teaching weeks? We mean that you're in either the lecture room or outside doing site visits from nine to five, obviously with coffee breaks and lunch breaks, with the tutors, with the lecturers, all day long, and then in, in the evening, often there's more events, social gatherings, dinners. So it's a full on uh, eight teaching weeks, the taught element of this program. So what are the themes of the weeks? These are the umbrella topics, and uh, each one of these umbrella topics will have many different subtopics, which you can explore further on our website. So year one, teaching week one, which, which is in October, I'll tell you the months where these teaching weeks are now, but if you want to know more precise dates, as they vary according to the academic year, they might vary a few days. So I'll tell you the month, so, so you will have a rough idea. So year one, introducing sustainable urban development. This is a teaching week in October held in Oxford. Teaching week two, climate change and the built environment, also in Oxford, by its uh, end of November or early December. The third teaching week, face-to-face, -face, as they all are, placemaking and urban design. This time is held in London and it's in February normally, first week of February or second maybe. The fourth teaching week is financing sustainability and this time back at Oxford we are in April. The final teaching week of year one is sustainable transport held in Oxford in June. Then you go for your long summer and you come back for year two face to face in October for urbanism, community and city building in London. You then go back to wherever you are in the world, you live and work in the world and you come back to Oxford in January for urbanization in the global south. The final taught element of the program is teaching week eight, leadership, governance, and future cities held in Oxford in March. So hopefully I got your attention by now. So who is this course for? So in the past 13 years, we have more than 300 students and alumni from all different corners of the world. We're actually in 60 countries worldwide and counting. You will be able to see a map in the next slide and see if there's someone from where you are or work. So from we, we this course is for those operating in a range of urban contexts, public, private and third sector organizations. So we have the sort of obvious, obviously related uh, built environment professions, the architects, the engineers, the landscape architects, but also the politicians, uh, the the politicians, the economists, the lawyers, the journalists. So we have a wide range of professional backgrounds alongside the wide range of uh, geographies. Here's the map where our 
60 plus and counting students and alumni come from. So a bit more information in terms of our partners in delivering this master's. So we run this master's in partnership with the Princess Foundation, where two of our teaching weeks are held, the teaching weeks in London, um, week three and week six. The course is also accredited within the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors, the RICS, you might have heard of. And all students are entitled to free student membership within the with the RICS and can register for the qualification of chartered environmentalists. So we have a few um, quotes from our students, uh, previous students, past students, what they say about the program. So many of our students either uh, progress in their career vertically or horizontally by changing to a different position. Um, there's a number of, of titles emerging in sustainable urban development, uh, which I wanted to, to tell you about. Some of our students have roles now, such as Net Zero Infrastructure Office, ESG Project Surveyor, Sustainability Consultant, Carbon Market Manager, Environmental Surveyor, etc. So these are some of the roles we're preparing our students for. So Dylan, for example, said, I have recently taken on a new role in government, leading the planning and preparation from an infrastructure point of view for the advent of electric, connected and aut autonomous vehicles. Marvin says, I saw the MSc as an opportunity to enhance my com competencies and expand my critical knowledge to progress my career mission of meaningfully contributing to the knowledge and practice of city climate action. Rachel, for example, says, I have recently started working for the UK's largest housing association. Such projects involve complex economic, social, technical and environmental considerations, which I feel more confident in analyzing and responding to following this master's. There's more students uh, highlights if you want to check on our website. So what does this course require from you, sort of the commitments and how is this uh, course assessed, the program assessed? For each teaching week, you will complete an essay of up to 3000 words on the theme of that teaching week. You are giving you are given essay questions or essay prompts. You choose one and you write an essay based on literature, case studies, you know, relevant uh, for the topic. Uh, starting from year two, you start working on your dissertation, the 15000 words research dissertation. You'll get training, research training, as I mentioned, so that you build the skills you need in order to develop robust uh, research in urban sustainable development. So finally, for full course, course information, please check our websites, get in touch, subscribe to our email lists if you want to hear more about future dates for future online events, also for the other program that we run, the PhD, we refer to it as the DPhil in Sustainable Urban Development. There will be next week another session um, just on the DPhil program if you want to learn more about that as well. Thank you so much for listening. It's now time for questions and answers. OK, so I see quite a few questions. Let's see. So one of the, the questions I see here is, is this program eligible for fresh graduates? Well, yes, it is. We accept except exceptionally bright, uh, fresh graduate students into our program. Not many, but we do tend to accept a couple um, every year. So the course really targets working professionals. Um, but as I said, we do accept exceptionally bright uh, undergraduates, fresh undergraduates, I mean. So let me see. So if this program is, uh, is this program eligible for post-doctorate? Post uh, so 
I guess the question is if someone who already has a doctorate could join the program. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's we have had that situation. We have had students with doctoral degrees either in, you know, in, in more or less relevant topics to the topic of sustainable urban development. And they actually turn out to be obviously great researchers and great students because they have the research skills already. In terms of funding, I think that's the sort of questions that you need to look into in our website. Yes, there are a few uh, grants and fellowships. Please do check for the details because it changes also um, every year. So you have to, ch to check for grants and funding on our website. Now, good day, says Razan. Sustainability projects uh, lead from Sudan. So GPAs, minimum grade. So the question is about GPAs. And um, Razan is asking, do I have a chance to be accepted with my case in the early or later deadline? So there is a threshold. However, depending on the professional experiences and backgrounds, we might consider students, applicants, who do not meet the minimum thresholds. So this is really about what students can bring to this program as, as much as what we can give them. So if we find that a particular candidate has a background that is relevant, knowledge made out of professional experience, we, will, we would and will consider this part of um, GPAs. Okay, let's see other questions. So I'm seeing Sarah shared the links, further information about funding opportunities. That's great. Complete applications must be received by the 19th of January to be considered. Exactly. There are two other deadlines, but those applications are not considered for uh, funding. So three application deadlines each year. Sarah is reminding us all November, late January and March. And complete, as I just said, complete applications must be received by late January deadline to be considered for university funding opportunities. OK, now a question started by Sarah. Where so meaning Sarah is asking me to address this one. OK, so for the eight weeks in person session, is there some leeway to join remotely? Well, that's an interesting question. And with COVID years, there was definitely leeway for remote access to um, face to face delivered sessions. There is still, I guess, some leeway, but it's based on exceptional and un predictable circumstances. So this is a face to face um, program and with exceptional circumstances, students could join online for the time being. After a lot of debate on the topic, this is how we are offering this program. We see great benefit in being face to face immersed in residential teaching weeks in Oxford or London. So in terms of grades, also Sarah commented that we are unable to comment on specific suitability during this session. Entry criteria can be found on graduate admissions websites with a link shared below. Let's see. Yeah, so I think I've answered this question that asks if I can specify the months that the eight weeks intensive courses uh, would fall. Hopefully that was clear. I can say those again if that's helpful. So that is October, November, February, um, April, June for the first year, and then October, January and March in year two. So another question, how many people are normally in one year? It varies normally. On average, we have groups of 25 
students. So another question, should I have a line subject research area study already defined before apply uh, to be part of my application? So part of the application, we ask for two pieces of written work. Those could have been produced in a different uh, degree or in your professional life. We just want to see how we just want to assess your writing and critical analysis skills. We you do you do not need to have your research area uh, known to you and made known to us by then. Only by the end of year one, we expect you, or beginning of year two, really, we expect you to know your research area. OK, another question we get often. I am a working professional. How do I get professor recommendations? So again, um, we understand that students that have been away from school for a long time might struggle to have access to academic rec recommendations. However, we do ask for someone that could assess academic skills, such as capacity to read, summarize, communicate, uh, uh, different perspectives, um, engage in a in a in a debate. So these are this is one way to go around um, the professional uh, academic recommendation letters. If and only if you've been away from university for a long time. So let's see. From Shivani. Sorry, I'm not reading all the names, but I will try and do that now. From Shivani. Hello, thanks for hosting this info session. How much flexibility is there within the program to shape your own assignments and areas of interest along a particular theme? Example, if I want to retain a focus on transport planning or if I want to focus on impacts of climate change on vulnerable groups, is that possible within the scope of the teaching mix? I would say that it's possible within certain parameters. As I uh, went through the eight teaching week topics, they, these are umbrella topics, broad, uh, intentionally so, so that we can fit within those topics many different angles and perspectives. Um, there are, so for every teaching week, where when you're writing your assignment, you can choose the assignment you're writing uh, from four prompts or research uh, essay, sorry, essay questions or essay prompts. So in that sense, you have some room for maneuvering. Also, you have room for bringing in bringing in your interests through the case studies you use to illustrate your more theoretical points. And so to a great extent, I think uh, students feel they can and the program is flexible enough for them to stay focused on their particular theme. What they also find is that there are so many interesting themes out there that they might not yet have learned enough about, um, that they are quite keen on doing a bit of some detours, not too many, we want you to stay on track for writing a dissertation, but to do some detours from your core areas of interest uh, in order to expand your knowledge on the topic. Um, let's see. Provisional teaching dates. Sarah, Sarah just sh share them. Share the link on the chat function box. Um, yeah, more on academic references. I think I've covered this. Um, another question on can I just do this program without doing dissertation? Uh, no, that's not really an option. Uh, if students don't do their dissertation, they do get a certificate of some sort, but please do check this more procedural aspects online, but it's not an open possibility. Now it's not a choice doing this dissertation. We see it as a a very important element of the learning process. So there's two questions here from Laura. 
Is there any online engagement lectures between residential teaching weeks? Very good question. There are. Uh, we just ran one yesterday, actually, with our year two students. Um, we also tend to have a more or less sort of a conversational relationship with our students. So you are all students are all allocated a personal tutor and then a research uh, tutor supervisor. And during the course of the two years, this is the person that you get in touch with whenever you're you have you face some particular struggles, if there's any or any particular questions you would like to to debate other than the procedural and admin uh, for which Sarah Cox is always in the background doing an amazing job. And other others, uh, other members of the admin staff, but Sarah really is the front office officer. So second question from Laura, I am personally interested in urban nature based solutions. And I was interested whether program will touch upon this topic. Definitely. One of our, you might want to check the profile of Desiree uh, Ortman. Uh, she's one of our uh, teaching uh, staff. And this is the sort of research that alongside AI, this is the, long, the, the sort of research that Desiree is currently working on. So you might be interested in checking her research profile. Um, another question from Atbul. Applicants are required to produce two essays with maximum 3,000 words. Not to, required to produce, not two essays, but let's see the rest. It's eight essays, actually. Is this based on our understanding of the topics in the urban, in urban studies? Can we extract some of them from literature's research papers? Right, so for each teaching week, you um, you are expected to produce one essay, 3,000 words maximum. These are based on research questions, um, sorry, essay questions or essay prompts that we give you. Uh, we give you four, you choose one. Then it's obviously all thinking that we do is based on our, on our own ways of thinking in our own personal and professional experiences. Of course, this needs to be evidence based and the way in which you write evidence based essays without doing your own research is by reading what others before you, other scholars have done and studied in that particular topic. So it is very much based on, as you, you are calling them literatures, which is the correct term, literature review, research include, which includes research papers, books, uh, peer reviewed journals is normally the way to go to address your uh, essays. So I, I hope I've answered that question. If not, please just restate it. I'm conscious of time. Um, so I will I will go to the questions that are starred by Sarah, pre previously selected by Sarah. And if there are any other questions you would like me to address, please just write them again, because there are many and I might have missed some. OK, so interesting question. How do you define academic ability? Good question. So academic ability is, I wonder in what context uh, you've seen or I've used this term to try and be more precise, but I would say that. So in terms of admissions, let me start with admissions and then let me conclude with what we expect you, the learning curve we expect you to go through. So in terms of admissions, academic ability is the capacity to endure through what is sometimes challenging new material in a relatively disciplined way without losing track or motivation um, regarding what you're doing. So it's some, sometimes not so much about uh, what you know before, but it is more about how you are or were trained to deal with challenging new topics. So if you are a resilient human being who knows that no matter what, they will get to learn this topic, it's a matter of time, patience and commitment. This is a very strong academic ability uh, to have. Um, obviously, you know, we all learn from each other and we're there to facilitate your learning process. So more than to give you simple, straight, 
solutions. We're there to, to help you to develop your skills in terms of critical thinking. And what we mean by critical thinking is the capacity to identify where knowledge is, what you need to prioritize. There's a lot about prioritizing because what we're not short of is material out there discussing sustainable urban development. So how do we prioritize? What are the most reliable information sources? How do I go through them quickly but effectively? How do I get the whole picture, the debates, without getting lost into the nitty gritty uh, dimensions of the debates? So these are the, the sort of things that we truly expect and we feel that we've done our job if you get to the end of this master's knowing and be able to take this with you for life. So this is not just about particular content that we as a society know in this particular point in time, as in what is sustain sustainable urban development and its three pillars, the economic, the social and the environmental, but it's also to do with how do we learn to learn? That's critical thinking. So I hope I've addressed that question. So I, I see some thumbs up in some questions, but those are actually answers from Sarah, is that right? I think so. So let's see, there's another start question here. In terms of broad focus areas, how does the program differ from the one year MSc in sustainability, enterprise and the environment? OK, that's a very detailed question, which I might not be able to give you a fair answer because I might not know that program as well as I could. Um, so I will leave that one there and we will try and summarize an answer for that one in the written material, which you will receive sort of the frequently asked questions alongside the link to this recorded session. You will receive the answers to some of these questions. So let's try and address that one in written rather than me improvising here. OK, and there's another question from Kim. I'm debating between this program and Urban Planning Master. What's the main difference? Mm -hmm. One of my future goals is in building communities in urban cities in, sustain in a sustainable way. So not sure if this course helps me more than urban planning course. Thank you. OK, so there's something I could I can um, clarify about this program, which is um, this is about, as I just said, the three pillars of sustainability. So we discuss in great detail the sustainability, the economic and the social dimensions of sustainability. We go through case studies, policies, best practices, failed practices. What we don't do so much, and this is important for some of you in the audience, I'm sure, is this is not a design program. There are many masters offering design skills. In this masters, there's one teaching week where it's a lot about design, the teaching week at the Princess Foundation, the placemaking and urban design teaching week. But otherwise, this is not a design program. Uh, so for the architects and planners who, or and others who want to further develop their design skills, there might be better masters out there for you. This is much more about the way we do things, what has worked, what hasn't worked, where, why, how. Um, so it's, it's social science, not so much the design component of uh, sustainable urban. So it's not sustainable urban design, it's sustainable urban development. So I was planning to take one final question before we wrap up this session. Uh, there will be another online session, a bit more informal. Uh, I think in October, maybe you will receive that information in the email you, you'll receive shortly uh, after this um, talk. 
Thank you so much, Carla. Someone is saying I need to leave. Thank you for your attention. More questions will be sent by email. Okay, so there's another question coming in. Background in civil engineering. Wait, they keep moving. Interesting in how we can develop sustainable transportation systems, specifically in third countries like my country, Uganda. Is this program a good fit? I would say that it's an excellent fit. Two of the topics of the teaching weeks, one focus on sustainable transport, the other focus on um, um, uh, sorry, the Global South, sustain, what is the title exactly? Sustainability in the Global South. So I would say that this is probably a perfect match. Of course, the topic of the Global South is covered throughout the eight teaching weeks, but there's one teaching week where that's the particular focus because we find that there's so many particularities to the Global South that it requires a whole teaching week for us to unpack those challenges and some of the potential ways forward to de dealing with those challenges. So let's see, uh, students on the MSc in Sustainable Urban Development are matriculated to college. This is Sarah answering to one of the questions. Okay, excellent. So if there's no other final pressing questions, thank you so much for your time and patience. This is difficult to engage both from you and, and from our side, but hopefully it was uh, valuable and useful. Do let us know if you have any additional questions. I look forward, we look forward to hearing more from you.